Hey everybody, today we're gonna take this Ender 3 and we're gonna upgrade it to direct drive extrusion for only $35. My name is Jim and this is The Edge of Tech. So I know what you're thinking. Why in the heck would we take this Ender 3 that's printing very good now after we got it all set up and add direct drive extrusion and change it all together? Well, the reason is I want to check out direct drive extrusion. <laughs> so there's been a lot of uh, debate either on the forums or on the groups or Facebook groups, um, whether Bowden tube is the way to go or direct drive is the way to go. And uh, the guys over at printermods.com reached out and said, Hey, we're going to start making and selling this direct drive extrusion. It's called the MDD version 1.0. MDD stands for modular direct drive. Do you want to check it out? And I was like, yes, I do. I really like getting into projects like this. And, uh, you know, so I started looking and, and there's a bunch of reasons why you would want to go to direct drive. Some of the reasons they list on the website are better flexible printing, easy loading and unloading. There's only this much in there. so. That is a lot easier than pushing it all the way down through the Bowden tube. Uh, shorter retractions. You can really shorten up your retraction times, which is going to help on speed. Also, increased extrusion accuracy. Uh, they list lighter weight than others. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a few other direct drives on the market. And this one actually comes in lighter weight than the other ones. This thing is really light. You get everything you need and you should be able to do it in about 20 to 30 minutes. So you take your factory Ender 3 or slightly modified Ender 3 like we have here, or uh, Ender 5, or any of the other printers that they offer. And within 20 to 30 minutes, you should have direct drive extrusion, should be printing, and you'll be rocking and rolling. The other cool thing is it's made out of 6061 aluminum, and right here in the USA. So I think that's pretty awesome, but I think we should get down to it. Let's do this. So when you get this in the mail, you open up the package, and this is what you see. A plastic bag, it has all the parts we need and we're gonna go through those parts now. So this is everything that comes in the package and it's everything you need. So we got the new X carriage here. We got the extruder spacers, the wire holders, the uh, motor spacers, the hot end spacers, um, the new bolts we're gonna need here, uh, the Bowden tube, the push to connect the PTFE fitting here and that is a nice one with metal uh, teeth on the inside. Very similar to what you get from TH3D. And the wire harness that you're gonna to need to extend the E for the extruder there. Um, this right here is awesome that it comes with that. So that's everything you get in the kit there and you should be good to go now. We're gonna start the install. The next thing you wanna do is grab the extruder stepper motor wire and go ahead and pull that out. The next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and cut the zip ties that are holding everything together here. The next step is to actually remove your Bowden tube and your coupler. But the issue is I've been using this machine for quite a while and it is uh, heated and cooled several times and this is stuck in there. So what I'm gonna throw in there uh, now is to leave the X gantry at the top, go ahead and turn on your Ender 3, go to control, temperature, and turn the nozzle up to 220 degrees. So once you get to 220 degrees, go ahead and let it heat up. And we're gonna remove the Bowden tube with a heated hot end. Okay, so now that we're heated up here, what we wanna do is go ahead and push your coupler in and see how it doesn't come out. Well, that's because it's all nice and hot in there and it's stuck. So what we need to do is go ahead and grab the wrench that came with the, the kit. And once you get the wrench that came with the kit, go ahead and loosen the coupler here. So you wanna be very careful because your hot end is 220 degrees C right now and you do not wanna burn yourself. There we go. So get that loosened and start turning it and it might be hard to get out. So what we're gonna do is take your wrench and just go ahead and remove your coupler. So when you're all the way loose, go ahead and give that bad boy a pull and it should pull out just like that. Remove the Bowden tube from your extruder. In this case, I'm using the EZR extruder 
and we're gonna go ahead and remove the whole tube out. The next thing you wanna do is remove any extruder you're using from the uh, stepper motor. In this case, like I said, I'm using the EZR extruder. If you're using the stock Creality extruder, it's still four bolts. It's very easy to remove, and uh, you can do it just like I'm showing here. I, the stock one, you'll remove the uh, tension spring and then the, the bolts as well. Remember when you get all the bolts out of your current extruder to hold the extruder itself and the stepper motor because that stepper motor will fall out. We wanna grab the small Allen wrench and we're gonna go ahead and remove these two M3 bolts here to remove this. Now I do have the easy ABL and that'll take that mount off as well, but we do wanna do that at this time. So grab your uh, Allen wrench, make sure it's the correct size use the small side and we always use the small side to break them loose and tighten, finish tighten, because you don't want to round off that long side. It's very easy to do, especially when you're trying to tighten or finish tighten. Get both of these broken loose and remove them uh, with your Allen wrench or an Allen driver. So once you have those two screws removed, pull out uh, the two screws or the mount. In this case, I have the easy ABL mount like we talked about. I could have removed the bottom nut and pulled this out, but I didn't really need to, and I'm hoping to reuse that bracket. Take the cooling block off just like that, and now that exposes the hot end. Once the hot end is exposed, take your Allen wrench, and what we wanna do is remove these two here, so that will remove the hot end from this carriage. Once both are pulled, pull the screws out and lay the hot end inside the cooling block just like this. Remove the belts from the carriage here. And you can do that by pulling them down and out. And then this should move down and pulling them down and out. Now you do not need to remove this from the pulley, just from the carriage itself. So your carriage is now free moving. We're gonna go ahead and remove the roller wheels from the X carriage and install them on the plate that came with it in the exact same order. So this is the plate that came with it. And we're gonna take these two wheels and install them here, the bottom wheel and install them here. And they need to be just like they're on uh, that carriage there, but on the brand new carriage right here. To remove these wheels, what you need is the wrench that came with the kit and your Allen wrench. And on the back side of these wheels, there's actually a nut. And the small side of your wrench should hold that nut. So you're gonna Position the wrench over the nut, take your Allen wrench, and loosen that nut up. We're gonna do the same thing for this one, and then we're gonna put those two on the new carriage, and we'll be right back to do that. All right, now that we have these top wheels removed, I just wanna point out how they're gonna go back on. How that's gonna work is you're gonna take your bolt, you're gonna push it through. Then on the back, you're gonna take the little spacer that comes with it and push that through. Then take your wheel here, put that on, and then your lock nut goes on there. So you'll grab your wrench, you'll hold that nut, and then you'll come to the back here, and you'll take your Allen wrench and tighten that in. And that's how these wheels go back on. Do not forget to put that spacer in there because if you do, it's not gonna sit on your uh, X gantry correctly. So if you look at it like this, uh, here's your screw, your spacer, your wheel, and your lock nut. We're gonna put this side on, and then we'll do the bottom as well. I'm gonna put this side on, and I'll be right back. Now take the last wheel off. This one is gonna go on backwards on the trolley. So remember that when this all comes off, Oh, you know what? This one actually has a washer. But because this is the eccentric nut, it is a little bit different. At this time, if you want to take and wipe off that uh, dust and everything that's accumulated, that's fine. Take your eccentric nut, your wheel, your bolt, everything that's already on, throw it on like that, put your washer on, and then your lock nut the correct way. And just like the others, hold your lock nut in position with your wrench, flip it over, and it's going to look backwards, and that's right, and go ahead and tighten that in. 
You want to make sure that's good and tight on the trolley. You don't want it to come off. And this, your eccentric nut, will adjust in a little bit. It's time to start installing our extruder. So take your spacer plate, throw it on there, and take your extruder, whether it is the EZR or the stock Ender 3 or the metal one, and throw it on there as well. Once you've got it setting on there, assemble the extruder. In my case, it'll screw down to the stepper motor here. On the stock Creality extruder, there's also four. On the metal replacement, there's also four. There'll always be four screws or bolts that attach to your stepper motor from the extruder. We put these two in, so we got all four in. And now your extruder is attached to your stepper motor. It is tight, and I would just go double check all your bolts. You wanna make sure it's good and tight on there. Now we're gonna go ahead and take the 3D printed piece, the spacer I got from the teaching tech video. Um, Michael over there created this spacer specifically to use with the EZR extruder. So we're gonna take his spacer and we will place it on the plate. We will take our extruder and the extruder normally will go on face like this. So your motors here, uh, extruder is extremely close to the plate because your hot end will sit here and it'll go directly in. So we want to take a screw. I want to push the screw through the, there we go. And then through the back plate and go ahead and put your nut on the back. So I tightened these two down real tight and I'm actually gonna get some lock washers uh, to replace these, but I didn't have any. So I'm gonna do that at a later date. But just to throw it out there, if you're using the stock extruder or the metal extruder, you're gonna to wanna to use this injected mold, injection molded part um, as a spacer. But we didn't need that because we're using the Easy R. That's why I did not use that part. But you will see that in the instructions. So if you do see that using a stock extruder, don't forget to use this part. Now what we want to do is grab the Bowden coupler they included and twist it into the top of your hot end. You want to twist it all the way down till it's tight and then release it about two turns. Now grab the PTFE tube they included and go ahead and push it down into that tube. I went ahead and I cut a piece of TH3D tough tube and I'm going to use this. Push that down in all the way into the bottom. Make sure it's good and pushed so it's all the way in and tight. You always want to make sure that your PTFE tubing is pushed all the way up against your nozzle. Grab your wrench and tighten that Bowden coupler all the way down. All the way in. And what that will do is hold that PTFE tubing nice and tight down into the bottom of the nozzle there. For the next step, we'll need the two screws that came out of the hot end, and we are just going to remove the lock washers from them. And then we also need the hot end spacer right here. The next part's gonna be just a little bit tricky. We are going to take our full assembly here that we've already started putting together, and we're gonna put the spacer behind the hot end. We want to take your hot end and get that put on. Now the tricky part of this is the PTFE tubing has to go up into the extruder. Okay, So when we turn around and put this on, see if I can show you a little better here. This hot end is going to go on here. We're going to push the PTFE tubing all the way up as far as we can into that extruder and then we're going to tighten it on so push it in there as far as it goes then take your spacer put put it behind there once it's behind there take one of your screws go ahead and push the screw in just like wow like that get it started take the other screw Push it in, make sure you can feel, get that one started, and you should be golden. Just go ahead and tighten those two down. Now we're going to install our cooling housing. I have the Easy ABL as well, and the Easy ABL 
should fit in the same holes as uh, the original housing. As you can see, I have the mount on. These two screws are now tightened. And if you did not have an easy ABL, you would just install those two screws and your cooling mount would be attached. I will be printing the Hero Me, and we're gonna be fitting that on uh, as well, but not at this time. I wanted to show you stock as much as I could, and that's how it goes. So once I found out we're not gonna be removing the whole X gantry from the machine in the new version of the instructions, what I did was I went ahead and put the uh, carriage back on the X gantry. I got the X gantry back on the machine, put the top extrusion back on, and then I re-leveled everything per our um, instructions in Luke Hatfield's help guide. So both sides are dang near perfectly level, which is great. So right now I'm going to install the tensioner. We're going to wrap the belt back around and install that to the bottom of the carriage. I went ahead and I got your belt wrapped around and on there, and I got the belt tensioned again. And I was just going back and forth. I wanted to make sure it's running straight in the channel. You want to make sure you're running perfectly straight in here. Otherwise, what you may need to do is shim this. If you built this with our help guide, with Luke Hatfield's help guide with my video, you know that, and you may already have a shim, so just put it back in. We're running real good right now. Um, as far as belt tension goes, you wanna make sure you have a little bit of a snap or a twang, and we do. Um, so I'll just keep an eye on this. I may need to tighten it just a hair more, but I think we're okay for now, which is awesome. So now we got everything assembled, the belt's back on, tensioner's tight, everything's level on the next step. Something important happened and I wanted to point it out. If you look at my last shot, this cable was actually through underneath here and through the back. It cannot be like that. It needs to be around the front just like this. So I had to actually remove this, put it back on and start over. But I wanted to show you that because I don't want you guys to make the same mistake. So please remember this cable needs to be in the front. It does say that in the instructions but I missed it when I put this back underneath, and that was my fault. Going forward with the new instructions, since you don't have to move the X gantry, that probably shouldn't be an issue, but just in case, remember this cable is in the front, and all your cables run right in the front just like that. Grab your screwdriver and take out the top left screw of the extruder. Once it's loose, it should just pull out. So get it loose and then pull it out just like this. Then what you wanna do is grab this big screw here and one of the wire holders and just install it back into the top left. It's going to come out with a Phillips head and go back in with an Allen wrench. Make sure it's good and tight because you want your stepper motor to be tight. So now that that's here, this can hold your wiring up like this with still enough slack here, but it'll keep it out of the way everywhere else. In the kit, we didn't talk about this earlier, but it did come with zip ties. I didn't see in, in the envelope, but they were there. Next, find the stepper motor extension cable, this one. Plug it into the bottom of your stepper motor. Once you get your stepper motor plugged in here, the cable, run that up and around, and we're gonna plug it into the stepper motor cable that is on the side of your harness. So it's basically just an extension cable that'll run up and around and then plug in like that. So what we're gonna do now is some cable management. Um, they did include some loom that you can use for your wiring right here. The problem with mine is, is I already have the easy ABL wires along with the other wiring and it's just a little too small. So what I'm gonna do is attach it like this on the underside for now. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm just gonna clean this up down to about right here and then we'll go through this part next. All right, so we got these cabled up decently. It looks pretty decent here. I may change that up in the future, um, but for now it looks okay. We have our loop in our Easy ABL. We wanna make sure we always have that loop. I clipped the cable ties we needed to clip and the next thing we need to do is get rid of the QR code. Peel back that sticker slowly. And if you have any residue, a lot of times you can just do this and pull it off. So it cleans up very nicely. So after you get this QR code off, go ahead and take out the top left screw right here under that QR code. 
and it's a long screw, but once you get it started, it should just pull out like this. Then what you want to do is grab another one of the cable holders with the 50 millimeter M3 and that's going to go in the top and also screw in like we did the other one. And it's going to be situated like this. And then you'll tighten it in pretty good there. And then use a zip tie to connect it so it doesn't go anywhere. One more thing they give you is actually a cable management um, piece for this back of your Z screw here, or this Z stepper motor, right? So they actually give you this piece here. You can pull those two out and then put this in, and then you can zip tie your cables right down, which is really awesome. I actually use this printed piece here. Um, it allows you to slide everything in uh, one by one, and it holds it all really secure in here. And I prefer this one. It gives a little bit of give just in case, but they include this one here, which is also a great alternative. You can actually use that and that'll be awesome for you. All right, so one of the last things you have to do or the last thing is make sure your um, spool holders on. I went ahead and flipped mine around. That way when I grab a, a spool of filament and I drop it on here, like so, it'll go straight down into my extruder like this. That's gonna be awesome. So I'm gonna get this thing fired up, make sure it homes okay, and uh, get some test prints going, and let's see what it does. All right, as you can see, I did some testing here. So the first one on this left side here is actually the print before I made the change. So this is with the Bowden tube, how the Ender 3 came stock. The only thing that I had on it was an easy ABL. As you can see, I did a retraction test and I did the micro all in one. Now I realize this is a little bit easier to read than these because I put the wrong filament in when I went back to print these. I actually, this is a stone gray and this is a metallic silver, uh, both by Coex, but um, this was a stone gray and this is the metallic, so you, it actually shines a little different. You can't read it as close uh, or as good as this one over here. This is the first print that I printed with the direct drive and I didn't change anything. All I did was uh, fix the easy ABL so it leveled properly and then I printed it. I didn't change any settings. I didn't do anything like that. And as you can see, uh, this is pretty similar actually. And this one though is quite different. This got a lot of stringing as you can see in there. Um, not only is there heavy stringing from the sides here, but there's heavy stringing, well, I'd say light stringing between them, but there's definitely some heavy stuff coming out the sides that the first one never got. Probably because I have my Ender 3 dialed in for this, and then I drop the direct drive on it without changing anything. So if you look here, this is the third print. All I did was tweak the retraction a little bit. Same thing, I printed uh, this right here, and this is almost the same as the second one. This all was teaching text files, uh, credit to teaching check for throwing these out there for us to test. So these were just retraction tests to see where we should be. And then this here, I dialed in the uh, retraction a little more. As you can see, not nearly as much stringing in the sides, um, nothing across the front, and the back actually looks pretty good too. There's a little bit between there, but that's it. Otherwise, overhangs look pretty good, and that was overall a pretty good print. Now I will need to dial this thing in a little better, um, but I just wanted to get some tests, some demonstrations out for this video of, you know, before and after. All right, as you just saw, I dropped the direct drive uh, straight on this Ender 3. Now we did modify it to use the EZR extruder, which was pretty awesome using Teaching Tech's adapter. Um, my initial thoughts were this is gonna be pretty awesome. I've never used a direct drive before. It was only $32.99 on the website, and this kit is pretty awesome. Um, I definitely suggest it. it. It comes with everything you need to transform a stock Ender 3 to use direct drive and get rid of that Bowden tube. So you can judge for yourself if you like it or not, but I tell you what, I do. And so far, this thing's gonna be pretty awesome, especially with that EZR extruder, because we all know that the Crowdy extruders, the plastic ones, don't last very long. Now, if you wanted to upgrade to a metal one, you could still use the stock kit. 
um, for this direct drive and it wouldn't change anything. Uh, if you do go with the EZR extruder, you definitely need to print that teaching tech adapter like I did and uh, make it work. Um, I really like it. I think it's worth the money. Uh, $32.99, I've spent way more on my Ender 3 for a lot less of quality of parts. <laughs> and I really think this is worth it. Time will tell when I get my settings dialed in how awesome this really is. But, you know, based on everything I came up with today and the install, which is actually really easy. If you're not filming it, it really only takes 20 to 30 minutes tops. Um, and, and I think when you walk through it all, it's actually a lot faster than it looks on film, uh, especially if you're not trying to film it like I did. <laughs> but I guess we'll see. You can determine what you think, uh, you know, from the results I got and um, how easy of an install it was. It really was easy, especially because in the new install instructions, you don't have to remove the top and you don't have to remove that X gantry, which means if you already did the X gantry rework, you don't have to do it again. And that is a huge time saver. Um, I really think that's awesome that they changed the instructions after we went through this. And I definitely uh, appreciate that. Um, once I found out that was changed, I had already filmed most of this and uh, I, I didn't go back. I didn't want to go back and refilm it, but check out the new instructions. You don't have to remove that X gantry, which is pretty dang awesome. Well, I hope you learned something today and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching the channel. If you liked it, give me that thumbs up. Uh, hit that subscribe button below. We are growing. We're going to do another giveaway at 5,000 subscribers. So keep hitting that subscribe button. Let's get this up to 5,000. And uh, if you want to follow us and see the next great video that comes out, please click that little bell right over here. You guys rock.